<laughs> y'all it's raining but you see i got the trailer down ready to load the car racetrack says we're gonna run tonight so we'll see but in the meantime i got a lot of stuff i want to show y'all so y'all stick around when we did our video on the tire stand, I promised that I was going to put a drawbar across here and show you all that. So if you haven't checked out the build for this tire grinding stand right here, it's two videos back. I'll put a link right here. Go check it out and everything shows exactly what we're using. The motor, where I ordered the stuff, the links, the whole nine yards. But I've moved up to the next thing. That video, we tried to keep it condensed. We just built the stand itself. Now I want to show you a couple of things. One, I needed to put a leg on the back right here. It was a little bit too top heavy to the rear. It could flip over the way I had built it. An engine stand, this sits back further and that's what I've used in the past. I had that straight under. So I put a fourth leg right here and I wanted to show you, I've got some big rubbers on here. And these rubbers right here are actually the bushings from Camaro Leaf Springs is what these are. So I just put a bolt and a washer up through the middle of them, squeezed them down, put some big rubber bushings on it. That's just so that when I'm working and stuff, um, grinding the tire off anything, it's not gonna move around on a concrete floor. That's working really great. This thing's super solid. I put one more leg right here because my draw bar right here that I put on, I didn't want it to be flex or have a bounce get in it, anything like that. So I ran me a leg and created a triangle right here and put on, that way I had me a good corner to tie this tube in right here, tied it all together, and then put the draw bar right across. I took a 28.5 that's a really tall, it was over 88 inches, so that's my max. All my asphalt pull-offs are even smaller than that, that's my max, and then I turned around and put another half inch between it and the draw bar. So if you're gonna put one of these on, Make sure that when you set up and you mount a tire to kind of see where this needs to be, that you get one of your largest tires and then add more that would more than compensate for if you ever had a tire even a little bigger than that. And that could become really important too. Think about it from a standpoint. Am I ever gonna do like late model tires where instead of like a 84 inch or a 88 inch rollout, you've got like a 92 or a 93 inch rollout. So keep all that in mind when you put this bar. Um, for me, I know I'll probably end up been building several more of these over the years. Um, and I, like I said, I set this so basically I could handle up to about a 89 to 90 inch rollout tire without any issue at all. Totally covers me. Uh, let's see, what else? Have it put switches to go back and forth between clockwise and counterclockwise. I just, it's got a jumper wire, the controller does, where you can go either direction. And I just set it so that it would run, you know, counterclockwise into my draw bed right here. Um, I could put the switches, I could just put two bumper switches down um, on the legs where you could take a foot from either side. I've been thinking about it. I really don't need to because I always want the tire to turn into the draw bed right here anyway. So I don't think I'm gonna put the switches on it. You could, if you wanted to, it wouldn't be a problem, but um, I don't think it's necessary for me. So at this point, I'm calling this done. Really happy with it. Uh, put the asphalt pull-offs on here. Didn't have the draw bar on it yet and just use it to scuff them off. But now we're gonna get our H500s ready to run. We've got one more run that we can make with our car on our timeline before the Southern Street Stock Nationals. And tonight we're gonna take and we're putting our GoPro on the rear of the car. We've been watching that right front, seeing what it's doing on this video. If we don't get rained out tonight, uh, we're gonna put the GoPro on the rear and get some footage and see what that left rear and right rear are doing Because you know, I've got a spring rubber on my right rear And so we're wanting to see are we getting into that and how much movement have we got going on and everything And we want to do that on the same track that we did footage on the right front So we're really starting to get this whole picture of how this suspension's working and everything with that said Let's get some tires on here and let's start grooving up these H500s to get them working I already had some grooves cut across this and I'm gonna put a groove right here. I'm gonna cut this. So I'm gonna cut this block apart right here. And that's gonna let that block right there twist. Okay, so I'm wanting that. 
That's going to help it to warm up as well, but it's also going to let it get bite. It's raining its tail off here. Some rain at the track. They're trying to get the race in. Um, so if no matter what, it's going to be overcast. It's cooler. I expect the track to be maybe slimy in a heat race, hooked up. It may eventually go dry slick, but I need a really grooved up uh, tire with lots of cuts in it, lots of ability to, uh, to clean itself out and get a bite. So we're going to put a groove right here, and then we're going to turn around and we're going to put some cross cuts across it. And then I think I'm going to cut that chain link pattern up again all the way across. And then we'll turn around and I'm going to put some parallel sipes in it. That's just going to help me to let the to rubber itself just work on the track, especially if it starts getting a black spot in it, starts slicking off in areas. The rule of thumb on sipes is sipes that are with the tire help the tire cool, sipes across the tire help it to build heat. If you think about that, when you're going into the turn, when you're leaning and pushing on the tire, the sipes are getting peeled open. You're getting air in there. You're peeling that sipe. You know, and a sipe is like a razor blade cut, okay? And so it's peeling the rubber open because it's just pushing on it. Whereas if you put a sipe across the tire this way, when you're on the throttle or on the brake, you're taking that rubber from one pad and that sight cut, you're pushing that rubber against that other one. So you're rubbing them, you're rubbing them like that. And so that's why they say that sipes across your, across your tire will build heat because they rub and push, whereas sipes going parallel get split open. And so that cools them, all right? That's the logic behind that. Let's get it cut up. I set my throttle over here on about 20%. All right, so I'm just going to drop it in. There we go. The reason that I like the, the draw bed across here is just because it gives my hand something to support against. I'm still holding my grooving iron in my hand, but I'm able to rest it and it keeps me cutting a straight line. See how I got my wrist here on it and I'm just basically fixing it against that draw bar. It gives me something to rest against so that I can get a good straight line cut. All right, that's good. Now I'm not gonna worry about getting all this rubber out of these. What I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna take my belt sander and go back over it and just let it peel all that out after. A lot of rubber on this tire, I'm not real deep. So I'm not cutting all the way to the cords on this tire, y'all. I am not going to sipe this last block on this edge right here because this block right here is going to get more twist and more abuse on this edge of this right rear than any of the rest. And if there's any of these blocks that I'm going to chunk out because of siping too much, it would be this one. So I'm going to leave it alone where it can stand up to a little bit more abuse. And because I've got so many grooves across it, I'm not going to sipe across it. Um, cause I would end up, what would happen is, is if I ran through these blocks, I'm going to end up with some really small pieces of rubber on both sides. And this thing could just shred out on me. The track was slicker than what I realized. It wasn't just slimy. It could really come apart really quick. Um, if I put all those cross cuts in there. So not going to do that. I think this bad boy right here is ready to get a bite. Let's put it on the right rear. to the races looks like uh, it stayed dry in Camden so we're gonna get to race after all got the car loaded up back here got all everything we need um, got my daughter Presley here got mom in the front seat hello got Jason here we are on the road blue sky sunshine they weren't lying it was rain 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 in my house but up here they hadn't had a drop that is one nice thing about having all the tracks at least two hours away. You can find one where it's not raining.
Colby finally got me on the last lap, but I'm telling you, I think we're about there. I definitely on the track that's hooked up. Cause uh, man, she was she was just hammered down. Um, lifting just a little bit, breathing on the brakes just enough to get it to rotate and hit that cushion. Um, of course, if you watch that video, you'll see in three and four, the cushion kind of went away. And so I was drifting through a little dry slick. Colby was able to get under me on that. So good for him. But uh, we just about had them. We're gonna go ahead and work through these tires. Uh, probably just bust scuff them off right quick. Make sure that uh, we didn't overheat them, anything like that. Put them right back on the car. We're gonna leave the setup alone on the, on the car. I think the track is gonna go dry slick, but definitely be chunky. So uh, swing so bang off that cushion. We're gonna hammer down in this feature and see what we can do. All right, y'all stick around.
y'all. So we finished sixth place. We earned that sixth place. TJ earned a bunch of the fastest cars it is in crate racing um, were there. And the five in front of me, I was they were pulling away from me, no doubt about it. But there was a bunch of them behind me that I was faster than. Um, so I was just really happy with the car. I think we are there. I think we've got this car figured out and got it working and everything. We are definitely ready for the Southern Street Stock Nationals, Ultimate Street Stock Challenge is putting on, heading to Why Not with it. Two, four, five, at least six or seven of the cars that we were racing against tonight are cars that always make that feature show at the Southern Street Stock Nationals. You know, always finish up front and everything. So that is a very good sign for me. I'm very happy about that. Like I said, it was six, but I will take that six all day long. All right, we're out of here. And hey, if you're not subscribed, subscribe, folks. This is good stuff. See you next time.